I want to talk a little bit about how you you mentioned in your book the the paradigm shift in regards to how the you know the one percent versus the point oh oh one percent right and the point oh oh one percent like you mentioned we were talking offline they don't look to really mm-hmm. add definitely if it's like second generation or whatever they're not looking to add another comma to their wealth right they're looking for status symbols just in different way owning sports you know owning class a real estate you mentioned that a little bit before we dive into that thesis i want to ask when you came to acknowledge that and become aware of that in your own life throughout your journey how has that changed your investment thesis or your investment mm-hmm. strategy yeah. or maybe your perspective on how to deploy capital um when, when you're partnering up with with um the, these these ultra high net worth individuals You know, the money always has a voice, and you have to give them the best product today. And the best product today isn't necessarily something that pays the highest return. It's something that they can brag to their friends about. Uh, We talked about this with sports. You know, we're pivoting into sports. Um, This could be world-class life science companies um, headed by people who are, um, for example, we have one that's headed by the 2018 Nobel Prize winner, Dr. James Allison, called Apricity Health. That is what sells because that's something that people are not going to be able to get into on their own because they don't have the knowledge nor do they have the network to get into that. So wealthy people are more, um, they, they, they tend to gravitate towards that more because there's a certainty there of execution because they know that someone's there and they can talk about that at the breakers over brunch or tea to their friends because everybody brags. Everybody, we all do. You know, social media has forced us to live a very conspicuous world and even people who you thought were never going to talk or brag are the ones who are, um, you know, are, the, are always going to be doing that. They might not show it on, 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 you know, Instagram, but there's a lot of hushed tones that get around. It always comes back to me because somebody will say, hey, I met someone at this club yesterday and, or, you know, over the weekend, they dropped your name. I'd like to link in with you. I'm like, okay, you know, and then, you know, we'll see what happens from there. But I think when it comes down to it, it's like um, you look at, so they, to them, quality is a sign of um, value and it's a sign of val- a, a store of value. So if you own a part of an NFL team, that's only gone up in value and probably only will because of gambling now and the acceptance of that and how that's being integrated for the owner's benefit, that to them is certainty. It's a high barrier to entry, but there's certainty there. Um, same thing with statement class real estate, class A real estate. If, you look, if you've ever heard of the store Zara, the family office, um, that is one of them So what I find here. so interesting um, about this, just like you mentioned, dollars just a year to what they call if you're not looking assets. for That's the, the returns, in this in their paradigm, or, you know, in their perspective, they're not looking for returns, it's more of that country, status symbol. I think you mentioned your book, in, kind of Trump, the reason why I bring up Trump, value. I know they're he's kind of controversial, it's because everybody knows Trump and so forth, but he's bought obviously a lot of real estate in some very high caliber places, Trump Towers, etc., and again, that is more of that status symbol, more so than that return of their portfolio is and, some of the world's uh, best just, real estate in London, that. New York, LA, and, and Miami too. Interesting, interesting, awesome. 